All right. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakak Wadash. This is Akshim Gar. Uh, I really don't have a title for this lesson. I was just going through the book of Jeremiah, chapter 35, right? And this is talking about the Rechabites, right? Uh, it's a particular family, uh, Israelite family. You know, they were uh, dwelling in tents. You know, uh, they were, they, they, they promised their ancestor. They were commanded by their ancestor not to drink wine, uh, not to plant any vineyards and, and, and different things like that. It's going to go over all that. But essentially what has me going to this topic, because it just has me just seeing it was like a big faith booster. As long as you do what the Heavenly Father commands of you, right, to the best of your ability, especially now in this time, you know, but uh, back then it was a little different, you know, because everything was set up. But if, as long as you do what the Heavenly Father requires of you, man, and you uh, uh you leaning on him and having faith in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, He's going to come through for you. He's going to see what it is that you're doing, right? Because here, look at this family. They weren't even in the land of Israel, right? Yeah, I think they were like, you know, somewhere outside or something like that or, you know, do dwelling somewhere else. But they came to Jerusalem because something happened uh, where Babylon was attacking. Uh, the Babylonians were attacking Jerusalem and whatnot. So they, they came and switched places. But I'm about to get all into it. And I'm going to just grab some precepts. Uh, Y'all will it, man. So I'm going to start at Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse, uh, where wants that? Um, verse one, right? It says, and I'm going to read this in the NLT so, uh, so that way y'all get a clear understanding, right? This is the message of the Lord. It's like, this is the message of the Lord gave Je uh, Jeremiah when Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king of Judah. Go to the settlement where the families of the Rechabites live, right? So they lived in a, a particular settlement and invite them to the Lord's temple, Take them into one of the inner rooms and offer them some wine. Right. So this is what the Lord did. He tested. He he tested the Rechabites, and I I'll, I'll show you why this uh uh this this thing was a particular test. And this this goes to show you that the Most High he'll he'll test us, man. He'll he'll allow uh uh Satan to test us, man. Or you know he'll he'll actually uh prompt us to be tested so that way he can prove that we're uh faithful to him, right? Because the Lord it says right here it says. Take them into one of the inner rooms and offer some wine. All right. Uh, so basically he did that. Now, verse five, this is when they came. It says, I set cups and jugs of wine before them and invited them to have drink. But they refused. Right. So you think the Lord didn't know they ain't drink wine? Of course he knew. Right. It says, I set cups of jugs of wine before them and invited them to have drink. Right. But they refused. No, they said we do not. We, it's like we don't drink wine because our ancestors, uh, ancestor Jehonabad, right, son of Rakab, gave us this command. You and your descendants must never drink wine. Right. And do not build houses or plant crops or vineyards. Right. But always live in tents. If you follow these commands, you will live long and good lives in the land. So this is only this is this is what their ancestors uh, commanded them. This is not saying that if you're an Israelite, you can't drink, can't drink wine or live in a house, nothing. This was specifically just for them, right? So uh, let me keep going. It says if you follow these commands, you will live long and good lives in the land. So we have obeyed him in all these things. We have never had a drink of wine to this day, nor have our wives or sons or daughters. Right. It says we have built we haven't built houses or own vineyards or farms or planted crops. We have lived in tents and have fully obeyed the commandments of Je uh, Jehonabed, our ancestors. But when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon attacked this country, we were afraid of the Babylonian and Syrian armies. So we decided to move to Jerusalem. That is why that is why we are here. Verse 12. When the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. Right. So the most high, most high, he was proud. You see, so the most high, he tested them, right? You see what I'm saying? And he wants somebody that that's going to be proven faithful, right? Now I'm going to show you what 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 uh, reward they got from the heavenly Father for for being faithful uh, 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 to the commands of their ancestor, right? So yeah, uh, the most high, he was using this as a, 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 a way for Israel to understand how we're supposed to follow Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? It says verse 13. The Lord, um, verse 12 says, the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord of heaven armies, the God of Israel says, go and say to the people in Judah and Jerusalem, come and learn a lesson about how to obey me. So he's using the, uh, how, how the Rechabites uh, 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 listen to their ancestor 
right? And saying in the same way that they listen to their ancestor, we should listen to the Heavenly Father. Of course, right? But, uh, you know, common sense ain't so, uh, ain't so common for Israel all the time, right? It says, the Rechabite do not drink wine to this day because their ancestors, Jehonabeth, told them not to. But I have spoken to uh, to you again and again, and you refuse to obey me. Time after time, I sent you prophets. Is this not what the Lord does? Right? He sends his prophets out on the highways and byways and telling our people to repent. It's just not what we do. Right? It says, time after time, I've sent you prophets who told you to turn from your wicked ways and start doing things right. Stop worshiping, uh, stop worshiping other gods so that you might live in peace here in the land I have given to you and your ancestors. But you would not listen to me or obey me. The descendants of Jehonabed, son of the son of Rechab, have obeyed their ancestor completely. But you have refused to listen to me. This is what the Lord is saying, right? I said this to, uh, he said this to Jeremiah. Right. Verse 17. Therefore, this is what the Lord uh, God of heaven army said. Uh, the God of Israel says, because you refuse to listen or answer when I call, I will send upon Judah and Jerusalem all the disasters I have threatened. Right. Verse 18. This is the point. It says uh, 18 and 19. Then Jeremiah turned to the Rechabites and said, this is what the Lord of heaven armies, uh, the God of Israel says, you have obeyed your ancestor, Jehonabeb, in every respect, following all his instructions. Therefore, this is what the Lord of heaven army says. Uh, the God of Israel says, uh, Jehonabeb, the son of Rechab, will always have descendants who serve me. Right. So that's a true blessing. Right. They might be a part of the 144,000. That's a promise that Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai gave uh, uh, the Rechabites, man, that they will always have descendants. Right. That serve the heavenly father. So I'm sure, I'm sure that some of those records are in the truth now today. And I'm sure those, 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 those Akim, they probably fervent too. You see what I'm saying? But this is the point, man. The point of the matter is when you do what the heavenly father requires of you, right? The heavenly father, he's going to see that and he's going to reward you for that. You see what I'm saying? Just like how the records, what they did was they followed their ancestor. And then they still got a reward for the heavenly father from the heavenly father. W what happened? Right. Their ancestors said, if you do these things, you're going to live a good life in the land. And ultimately, right, is not being a servant of the heavenly father a, a, a good life. You see what I'm saying? Now, I understand that the servants of the heavenly father, sometimes we got to go through things. But at the end of the day, it's still sweet, man. It still has its, its perks because the heavenly father always looking out for you and protecting you, providing for you. Right. So the heavenly father just promised the Rechabites for them following their ancestor, right? And what their ancestor promised them, that if they do good and, and listen to what he says, he's gonna, uh, the, the, uh, they, they're going to live good lives. You see what I'm saying? So how much, how much us, man? Right? We should, we should do the same thing, right? We, you know, we Israelites, we all Israelites. They did it. We can do it too, right? It says, 1 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 51, call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So you shall receive great honor and everlasting name. So the point is, right? Think about all the great men, right? That did what the heavenly father required of them, right? The heavenly father ain't forget that. He ain't forget the Rechabites. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a family that's just uh, dwelling in a settlement uh, somewhere in Israel, you know, outside of Jerusalem, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and just, uh, uh, just, just keeping the commands, commandments of the heavenly father, of course, but also keeping the, uh, uh, the command that their their forefather gave them, the, the heavenly father ain't forget about them. You see what I'm saying? So when we trust on Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, in those tribulous and perilous times, the Lord is not going to forget about us. He is going to see everything that we put into this truth, and He is going to reward us uh, uh, justly, man. You see what I'm saying? This is why we we, we should be we should be uh, uh, pumped up in the spirit to do what we we have to do for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, right? Let's be like those Rechabites, man, who, 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 who were faithful uh, to the commandment of their ancestor. So should we be to the Heavenly Father. You understand? <laughs> so just like that, man, as long as we doing what the Heavenly Father requires of us, we putting in that fervent, uh, uh, that fervent effort, right? Doing it with a fervent spirit because the Most High loves a cheerful giver. What's going to happen? The Lord, he's going to reward us justly for it, man. He's going to uh, reward us with abundance and protection, right? It says... Was not Abraham found faithful in temptation and was imputed upon him for righteousness? So the Lord saw what Abraham did, right? And he said, all right, bet. He gave Abraham a promise, right? And he said, all right, I see. <laughs> That's righteousness. I, okay. 
Joseph, let's read 53. It says, Joseph, in the time of his distress, kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. So did not, did not, did not uh, Joseph go through hell, man? He was, you know, he, he went through hell. He was sold into slavery, right? He was putting, he was falsely accused and thrown in a, in a dungeon. But at the end of the day, he never lost his faith and hope in the Lord. And what the Lord saw that. And at the end, boom, what did he do? Rose, uh, he rose Joseph out to be second in command in Egypt, man. The greatest nation at that time, the most power, the, the, the most powerful superpower at that time, right? Made him second in command. It says, verse uh, 54, Phineas, our father, and being zealous and fervent, obtained the covenant of everlasting priesthood. Yahweh Shai for fulfilling the, uh, the word was made a judge in Israel. Caleb for bearing witness before the congregation received the inheritance of the land, right? David for being merciful possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. <clears throat> Elias being zealous and fervent for the law was taken up into heaven, right? Ananias, Azariah, and, and Misael uh, by believing were saved out of the flame. So, man, listen, man, it, it, it goes on and on, y'all. Y'all know these stories, right? You see what I'm saying? You know, this is this is these are all faith boosters, y'all, right? You no, know, King David, Caleb, look at the great things they did, right? You know, uh, you got the three brothers who, who you know who got thrown in the fire, man, right? Did the Lord not come through for them? Daniel, for his innocence, was delivered from the mouth of lions. Y'all know about that, right? It says, thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. So the point is, you do what the Heavenly Father requires of you. And at the end, he going to keep his bargain. He going to keep his part, uh, part of the bargain. He going to come through for us, man. He's going to rescue, uh, rescue us and save us and protect us. Right? He's going to see everything we did. And he's going to reward us at the end. He's not going to just let it go. <clears throat> right? So verse 61. Oh, yeah. So I, I got that. Uh, what was the other scripture I wanted? I wanted something. Yeah, so let me get, let me get this for y'all. Uh, the book of Hebrews, right? Chapter 6 and verse 10. And it says, let me read this in the KJV. And it says, <clears throat> For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister to the Most High. He's not unrighteous, man. That's unrighteousness. Like that the Lord, you're gonna do good for the Lord, and the Lord is just ain't gonna ain't gonna hear you as long and you've been and you've been enduring faithfully into the end. The Lord just gonna just gonna forget about you. It don't work like that, man. Stop comparing Yahweh Bashim Yahusha to you. If that's how you think. You might forget, but the Lord don't. He's gonna remember us, right, in our time of trouble. He's gonna protect us in our time of trouble. Right? But we gotta stay faithful unto him. And you believe, and if you have faith that he will come through for you, he's going to come through. Especially if you've been doing what you're supposed to. Alright? Let me get this last precepts. I ain't making this joint too long. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 10. Look at the generations of old and see, did any ever put the, uh, did any ever, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? So if you call upon the Lord, you doing what you're supposed to do for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, he gonna come through for you, man. Just look at how the Rechabites were rewarded. Just going back to the uh the, the topic at hand, you know they did they did what was required of them. They kept the command, right? And at the end of the day, the Lord rewarded them by always having descendants of the Rechabites be being servants unto him. So I'm sure, right, that some of those Rechabites. Descendants of the Rechabites are here today and they're in the truth, believing because and then also by believing they have mercy, man. And we read that in Second Corinthians 4 and 1 by even having this truth in the Harakak with Dash. It's a blessing because now you have mercy right now. You can seek repentance, right? Because if you don't believe how you going to seek repentance. So for you, even having this truth to believe is a mercy from the Heavenly Father bestowed upon you to be his servant. You understand? So, you know, man, hopefully you Akim and Akwati and were edified, exhorted and comforted. And with that, I want to say, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Barakatham, Shalom.